Welcome in to the Fun Astrology Podcast. Hump Day, midweek, Wednesday the 27th. Thomas Miller, thank you so much for joining us. We're going to basically roll back into taking a look at Saturday's September Equinox chart. If you didn't catch us yesterday, we started the Part A is yesterday, Part B today. Going to float something out here really quick. A lot of you have booked readings, and I oh so appreciate it. And a lot of you are following here in real time. I have created myself a monster. <laughs> I totally did not intend to do this, but I did start it under Mercury retrograde. I made a conscious decision. I knew what I was, you know, that I was consciously doing that, and this is kind of a ripple effect of that for sure. I'm going to be working on the calendar as it is, mostly affecting the month of October. So if you have a reading booked in October, and if you hear from me, it's only because I had a really, really bad day on Monday physically, and I need to take care of myself. So we are going to have to stretch some stuff out, and that might affect things. And I am more than happy to offer a refund if the timing doesn't work out. And there's probably going to be some upset around this. So I'm just saying I've got to do what I can do, and I'm going to look at it with the best eyes I can over these next couple of days and see what I can do to make it work for all of us. But I just wanted to tip you off that that might be coming, so watch your inbox. We may have to do some shuffling around. Now, did I mention that Mars was approaching the south node of the moon in Libra in this equinox chart? That right there was a Mars approaching the south node announcement, I'll tell you, if ever there was one. Conflict, challenges, triggers. So in this equinox chart, we have Mars at 17 degrees Libra, the south node at 25 degrees Libra. They can join a week from today, October 4th. Now, if that date rings a bell, it's because you've probably been hearing about this FEMA from the United States folks, at least, this big communications test that they're going to be doing on that day in the afternoon. Now, this is released on the FEMA website back in August, and it says the purpose of the October 4th test is to ensure that the systems continue to be effective means of warning the public about emergencies, particularly those on the national level. Well, that obviously is just enough fodder to set off that, oh, what are you hiding that we're going to be experiencing? And that goes back to the whole trust in society right now is challenged, and I think rightfully so. Respect is either earned or forced. Right now, I know a lot of people are feeling that it's probably the latter more than the former. Now, the other thing that people have had their eye on is the last time that Mars approached the South Node in Libra. Happened to be 1987, October 12th of that year, to be exact. It was at 2 degrees that they conjoined that time. This time, 24 degrees, 57 minutes. So basically 25 degrees. Seven days after that last time they conjoined in Libra, on a Monday, the Dow Jones Industrial Average crashed 23%. That was the biggest crash since 1929 in one day. The chances of that happening today on one single day are a lot less because of all the circuit breakers they put in. They shut the thing down now. And is that a forecast that this would happen again? Well, no, not for me anyway. There's plenty online. Consciousness is a lot different today, number one. The degrees are different, number two. I mean, we could pick apart a whole lot of reasons. Or it could repeat. It's a cycle. Astrological cycles, ask Ray Merriman, are highly effective. So it's in the possibility. It's in the realm of possibility. And it certainly is one of those aspects, since we haven't visited it for so long, that is worth noting, especially in the context of the rest of the chart that we talked about yesterday. Now, what I'd like to do is pivot to the other side. Let's start finding some nuggets of gold in here, okay? So one is the aspect we were just dealing with. Mars conjoining the south node of the moon on October 4th is in a trine to Saturn in Pisces. Hey, that all of a sudden says if you want to release some karma big time, that you're going to have an opportunity over this next week. One of the things that has been coming up in these readings is this whole thing about reshifting and restructuring and like knowing that there is this shift underway and how can I participate? And one of the areas is to let go of stuff that has been accumulating for lifetimes. And this is the best time ever to do that. And it's because of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction back in 2020. 
won't go into that here now, but it is a marvelous time to release stuff that has been in the path of your soul for a long, long time. And this gives us skids to do that if you're on the highest timeline side of life. So if you had your highest timeline t-shirt and coffee mug, <laughs> you could work on this in your highest timeline journal and laugh and smile as you do, realizing that, you know, through all the struggles of daily life, I am going to do what I can do to move myself to the higher sides of these aspects. And I'm going to let everybody else live out the lower sides. I'm going to let the collective worry about what date something is going to collapse. These dates seem to keep going by faster than we can accumulate them. The Actually, talking to you guys has been amazing on these readings. It truly has. That those of you who have your head in the sand are the happiest. I can tell you that. That's a pattern I've seen. People say, oh, I didn't have any idea. And they're happy. Or at least they're not distracted by all this other stuff. So here is a really positive skid, skidded up, greased up, lubed up aspect in the sky that you can get on the high timeline side of and use Saturn's desire to help you get in alignment completely with your soul's path. I mean, this is on the high timeline side, absolutely beautiful because Mars becomes power to remove, to purge, to cleanse. Saturn becomes that loving father who wants to align you with your path and wants the easiest, smoothest path for you instead of trying to having to be Lord Karma and take the difficult side. Okay, there's more in this chart we can glean, so let's come back and we'll give a day three to it tomorrow. No exact aspects in the sky today, so basically what we had from yesterday, the Pisces moon. We'll talk about what happens overhead tomorrow and then wrap the rest of this chart up. Have a great hump day. I love you. Stay the course. Focus on the high timeline. And we'll see you back tomorrow.